What's up guys and welcome to the recap of the first NA Winter Regional and to say it was eventful would be an understatement. We saw plenty of upsets on day one, a couple of new teams in the top four and maybe a new dynasty in the making. In this video I'm gonna take you through the entire event so let's get started right away. So you can already see it at the first glimpse at these groups that there was a bunch of stuff happening. We're gonna go through it one group after another and about group A there were a couple of things. First of all the players of GNG, Noli and Abjack were finally moving to the US getting their own apartments not staying at the Shopify facility anymore Jake had a tweet about this saying they were struggling a lot with their move over because it was mentally taxing and he also says the team level was also struggling the past week and a half he has been struggling a bit mentally with the move but yeah if you know the outcome it was worth to him so that was one thing the other thing was definitely complexity finally wanting to show what they're capable of there were a bunch of people saying that they were actually insane in scrims but they could never show it when it came to the main event so they were to deliver finally at some point and uh, as you can see they did so uh, i'd say the first two rounds pretty uneventful gen g complexity getting both their wins and in round two exactly the same thing happening and i think Everyone who tried to predict this group beforehand probably had uh, Complexity and Genji as top two and Dignitas and Koi as the bottom two. Then at the very end, it was about who goes out between Dignitas and Koi. Dignitas took this one and it should be the start of something bigger for Dignitas. We're going to get back to that later, but this was a pretty decisive win. And then obviously this game between Genji and Complexity. At that time, it was a huge upset. Not a lot of people saw it coming, but they got it done and Complexity won the group and therefore they day one was already done they advanced to the quarterfinals and genji had to go to the playoff round one and therefore we saw the first surprise in group a already then group b didn't have a huge upset but definitely the most decisive thing was furia winning against face was really back and forth between the two and especially five and four with overtime <laughs> absolutely insane could have gone either way but furia looked a bit better with lost now on the other hand face not as consistent as usual you're gonna see it later when we go to the playoff that really was not their best showing in this region and everything else was basically the same as in group a the designated best teams in the group getting the top two and the arguably worst teams fighting for the last spot knights in that case took it and therefore they advanced as well and then we're gonna get to group c and this is the first time I want to talk about this because I noticed a huge flaw, in my opinion, with how these matches are being played. Because you can see in the first two rounds, like almost every higher seed is winning their matches. There was only one game where SSG, we're going to get to that later as well, lost to Optic. But uh, you can see it. Everything is green on the left side. So when you go to the team streams, you just watch your favorite team and everything is fine. But then in the last round, two seeds of every group. So Complexity, Gen.G, G2 versus Version 1 and SSG versus Energy would be playing all at the same time. And therefore, you need four streams open to watch all these top matches. It would kind of be better, in my opinion, if they were spread out a little bit during this. So you can always watch the top match or like have two top matches at the same time and not have them all in one round. And then afterwards, when the round are played you just have to check oh okay in this match something huge happened i don't know like uh, complexity won against gen g but you wanted to watch v1 versus g2 and therefore you missed the entire action of that top match you know and i think this could definitely be improved i don't know if i'm alone with that opinion let me know in the comments would be interesting to know but now let's dive into group c here where g2 was looking very good and for v1 it was kind of like the same thing as with face they weren't looking as strong as usual there was definitely something missing maybe the roster rumors of com being replaced shake things up internally a little bit it's just speculation so but at the very end it was the same thing as in group b nothing too special where we just had all the top seeds winning their matches and then at the very end it was about who goes out between axel and a crew and v1 and g2 playing for the higher seed now in group d on the other hand things were a little bit different because energy looked in my opinion way better than before it really looked like they could finally display the things they were working on the entire time and it wasn't like a full turnaround where you would say yeah we got our lts x energy back but it was a way better showing than before and you could see it right away they won against optic huge win for them i think this is a very decisive win because if they lose this they're probably going out with m80's performance and overall an incredibly uh, stacked group in my opinion i think this group could have ended in every possible way and it would make sense <laughs> even with ssg going out m80 on top like everything was possible here and the outcome eventually was that optic 
went out. And even though they won against SSG, when it really mattered the very most against M80 here, they could not get it done. And it wasn't like that they made it super close. They were fighting hard, yes, but M80 just looked better. They wanted it more. And the same thing as with we won. Maybe the roster mania just shook up things internally. I don't know that, but Optic did not look like themselves. And to be honest, you could have probably seen that one coming because they already lost the tiebreaker to make the main event right away. They had to go through the close qualifiers. So not everything was looking too well for them going into this tournament. And then at the very end, they went out. They had the same game difference as M80, but because they changed it, so there is no tiebreaker anymore. It's about head to head and they lost this, as you can see, uh, against M80. So therefore they went out. And this was probably the biggest upset of the groups but day one was not done yet there were more upsets to come and we're gonna take a look at the playoff three here now and <laughs> you can see it in the first match right away face clan lost to that m80 roster and m80 beforehand when two of them were still playing for luminosity they could not get these results not at all they were way below their expectations and everyone was starting to write them off and this time they finally had their pop off and as i said face v1 and also ssg you could argue were not looking quite the same as you expect them to and i don't know if they were missing like the deep down fire to win these regionals because they were focusing on the major already but there were so many teams outside the top five that were trying to prove themselves and they gave them everything and therefore this was an earned win by m80 and they were gonna be at the top eight for this regional next up we had that match between dignitas and version one and you can see a clean 3 and 0 and version 1 was out so this meant on day 1 optic face clan and version 1 all three of them going out absolutely insane to me i don't think anyone in the entire world had predicted this outcome for these three teams at least not going out this early not making the top eight and for some of these it's a really big hit towards their hopes to go to the major i think optic can almost write it off already because they have fallen so far now and then face and v1 also going out very early and some others picking up some valuable points we're gonna get back to that later and yeah that was basically the most insane stuff happening on day one and i personally think Think day one is always the best day because of all these upsets happening and have some other teams move on here like dignitas and complexity for example and yeah the rest of the day was pretty uneventful as i said energy looked like they got a few things together now uh, looked very much improved and therefore they weren't struggling too much in these matches against knight uh, the first one was pretty close and then they just took it away and for genji they got caught off guard a little bit in the first game but then they really popped off and uh, got it done with a three and one advancing and i think it was chronic who said he's uh, kind of unhappy with his performances in groups and he can only perform really good in playoffs but as i said in the beginning the genji roster had a lot to deal with coming into this regional at the very end it didn't really matter you can see it already in the playoff three but we want to talk about a couple of other matches beforehand overall the quarterfinals were exciting because of all the new teams coming in in my opinion like the fact that complexity were playing against m80 meant that one of them was guaranteed top four that was already pretty awesome then g2 was energy basically the el classico of na coming back in a quarter final always nice to see i personally had hopes that energy might take this to have a really good result in this region to really display how much they improved but i think if you look at these matches all of them were insanely close and i think with a tiny little bit more energy could have taken this g2 was beatable at that day but for example atomic was building a brick wall in net and therefore it was very tough for energy to get through this but overall i think energy can be very happy with the performance even though a four and one might look pretty one-sided but it really wasn't and i'm already excited to see energy in the next regional because i really hope they can keep this up would be awesome to see them back in form and yeah g2 back to the top four also very good for them but this also meant that they were gonna meet gen g over there and gen g yeah uh, what can you say in the playoffs they are just steamrolling everything that did not work in groups against complexity or in the first game against a crew started to click again and fury are with loss now also looked a little bit improved in my opinion but against gen g it's just not enough and therefore this outcome was destined to be basically and then before we move to the semifinals we need to talk about space station versus dignitas because another upset and i said it before that v1 face and space station 
were missing something they usually had. And for the first time, SSG were missing the top four. And this not only came down to SSG missing something, Dignitas, and I mentioned this when I was talking about Dignitas versus Koi here, this was the start of something for them. They were really popping off. You could see that they wanted this so much. They had Breeze on there who has been there before, but Andy, for example, has played like 15 regionals and never made the top eight or even the top four, I believe, was a stat. And that's just insane that he still has that drive and he finally got it done. They just wanted this win more. And what I think is pretty impressive because Dignitas was basically non-existent in fall. They are being coached by the ex-Queso coach called Nick. And if you remember that, Queso also was basically irrelevant for one split and out of the sudden in the next split they were a top three team in the world probably and I would definitely give him some credit here for sure because the Dignitas roster also with the addition of Evo now who out of the sudden looked way better than on that Axide roster really got things rolling and it was nice and refreshing to see the Dignitas roster do well and therefore this one definitely deserved here and something similar was happening over here with Complexity where they really finally wanted to show what they're capable of and they did so that m80 roster can be more than proud of themselves as they turn things around as well coming from the fall split they did not get the results they wanted and complexity as well but complexity really popped off i think on paper this roster always needs to be in contention for the major in the fall they did not get it done entirely but this time they are definitely up there and they advanced to the semi-final and as i mentioned earlier complexity was m80 meant that one of them would be in a semi-final 100 but also with the upset of dignitas winning against space station man we would get complexity versus dignitas in the semi-final and therefore guaranteed one of them in the finals and this already meant it was gonna get spicy however the results you can see it there was not a single game seven in the entire playoffs kind of sad in my opinion that's also another factor why i like the day one way more there's just so much more happening but this match was just awesome to see dignitas fell a little bit apart maybe it was the pressure of finally being up there but complexity played cool and simple and uh, for the other match you can't really say much about about that you can see it g2 also fell apart uh, after the three and oh not even the time out helping them and the six and one just a statement by genji here it was not the most exciting match and i think energy could have not done anything different against genji because they are just that good at the moment but a top four for g2 nonetheless pretty good showing and they can have hopes to make the major where the last time if you remember that winter major they won now coming to the grand final the scoreline was pretty decisive but also some games and uh, it was not in a way you probably expected but the first game genji won at five and one then got a little bit closer and out of a sudden complexity completely annihilated genji in that game three they got a 7-1 and one victory. They used all their goals on this match. And then Genji was taking a timeout. Illusion was talking to the team, probably telling them to just write it off as an oopsie. And then they came back stronger. And at the very end, they crowned themselves regional winners once more. And this then meant that the reigning major champions also win the first regional in winter. But overall, I think this was definitely a deserved victory for Genji. And we have an interesting stat here from uh, johnny boy these were the countries participating in the grand final with with complexity being a team back when they were true neutral coming to na over from sam they obviously have two players from sam in race bull ajg and then with the cross region transfer of crr coming over they have a team full of non-na players and almost the same goes for genji as abject and noli as you all know it came from the uk before the season and chronic being the only player playing under the US flag here in this grand final. So it was pretty interesting to see how far this esport has come and especially how many nationalities they are competing at the highest level. And I really like the sweep by Johnny Boy, so shout out to him. Yeah, guys, that was basically everything that happened over the weekend. Would love to hear your opinion about this regional. Did you like the performances of all the new top eight teams? What do you think about the upsets of SSG, Face, Optic and version one going out fairly early? Would love to read through that. And obviously, if you enjoyed this video, hit the sub button as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.